here we are, Colorado opener for ducks. So we're excited. Never tried duck hunting in Colorado. I've been meaning to get to it. This weekend's perfect weekend. We're done with bow season for elk and deer, and uh, we have a little wall here. So uh, give it a shot, hopefully literally. So we'll be uh, doing something different today. Instead of doing the usual, which would entail just sitting by a pond, putting some decoys, calling, hopefully they come and land, we're going to basically be more active here. We're going to follow this little, this little creek and some areas get a little wider and I've seen ducks in the past here. So we'll, we'll see what happens. I mean, it's basically like puddle jumping them. That's what I think it's called. So instead of, again, calling them in, it's more active. We're going to go. Most probably they'll rise as they hear us. Maybe I might give them a shot when they're still low, but see what happens. So uh, I'm excited though. I'm hopeful to at least uh, get some ducks to flush and it's very thick so sometimes I might not even be able to uh, take a shot as they're taking off but I'll try to stay close to the water and sneak up on them as much as we can.
first duck of the season. Good eater right there. And yeah, it doesn't take a lot of equipment. People think they have to have a dog, people think they have to have all these decoys, and, but nah, I mean, we're hunting mainly big game. This weekend, there was nothing, and it's the opener for a duck, so why not? I mean, why not go, take a walk, take the gun for a walk there, and uh, a very active headshot, and you hit it right in the head, and you can see all the, I mean, and it didn't suffer, and that's what I want to say here is most people, I mean, some duck hunters might say it's unethical to shoot them on water. But here, I wasn't in a swamp where you have a lot of ducks and maybe hunters on the other side where you could potentially hit somebody else. Here, I was shooting down. I knew that my target and beyond, obviously. And I did the clean headshot, which, you know, didn't suffer. And that's the whole point. It's, it's all about doing it ethically, humanely. Plenty of people will be hunting on those ponds and be sky busting them. They'll be shooting at them you know, way high. It'll be gutting them, they might not take them down, and the animal will suffer and die later. If I can, if I know it's safe to do so, I will take a headshot on a, on some people would say a sitting duck, however you want to call it, but I know the animal didn't suffer. It's going to taste just as good, and it's totally legal. So, again, you, you, you might disagree with me, but anytime I can, I try to take clean headshots, and when they're in the air, and they're moving, and it's very easy to misjudge the distance and not take them down. Most people, you know, it's not a 100% deal there with a shotgun and duck. So I have no problem doing this. So uh, it's going to be great. Great eating. Nice organic duck. And uh, we're very happy. First one of the season. And then uh, keep going. I mean, we walked half a mile. I mean, we we're just following this little creek here. And, uh, you know, it's an agricultural area. It's just, it's just a matter of time. I've done it since I was a kid. We used to just, you know, just follow those creeks and try to sneak up close enough. Sometimes they'll bust and shoot them in the air, or there'll be one we can shoot on the water and the other ones will take off. This one was by itself. I mean, it does happen, but uh, you just never know. So uh, that's why I reloaded right away, because sometimes there'll be more. You know, usually ducks like to hang out together. So uh, just going to put it in here and keep going. Maybe we'll get another one. But it's a good start to the season. I mean, yeah. So let's see what happens next. But I'm happy. I mean, that made my day already. So we got dinner. Yeah, we got dinner. And I'm telling you, in a stir fry, Allison makes a mean stir fry. You just slice the, the breast nice and thin, like cutlets. Very good, especially this kind of duck. So uh, let's keep punky and palm trucking. Let's see what happens. I can't believe it. I just jumped. A beautiful elk that was bedded in all of this thick brush that I just walked through. I was hoping to catch up with him once I came out of it into the open, but that didn't happen. Really cool though. So we're almost back at the truck. We did about a mile this way and came back and we got that one duck we, uh, we showed you earlier. And now since an elk that was bedded in this thick stuff and on the way back we jumped another one. So sometimes there's a lot of crossover between seasons. Obviously we're duck hunting, we're not elk hunting. But something to remember that it's actually a nice little area for them. And uh, when elk season comes around, it'll be a good place to keep in mind. You know, so there's a lot of crossover. You hunt for one thing, but you just never know what, what else you could find. You know, I've seen a lot of good deer spots when I was duck hunting other places. And uh, just got to keep, you know, keep that in mind. And also, here, I want to touch up on the, my setup. I mean, this is a, an old 870 Remington Express. And uh, I bought it used a long time ago, real cheap. So my, what I'm trying to stress here is that it doesn't have to be expensive, you know, to get equipped. You don't have to go and buy the best of everything. I mean, this, you know, it's a tried and true, you know, Remington's obviously are very good guns. Been around for a long time. And uh, so cheap setup here and we just, you know, got ourselves dinner, you know. And it doesn't have to be complicated. All you need is basically you need a federal duck stamp. So that's $25. That's across the board. That's all states. 
it's a federal deal and uh, that goes towards converse conservation paying for you know building duck habitat and all that so it's really a nice donation and you know promotes more of what we enjoy you know it's the outdoors and place for the animals to be and uh, for us to go and harvest some so may it just makes sense and then you know you have to add your small game license in most places but still very relatively cheap to have a good time we just hiked around beautiful day midday we didn't have to wake up early and again we got dinner and uh, and speaking of which Allison will show you how uh, how she's gonna be making a stir fry with it and I'll show you too uh, most probably there won't be any pellets in the meat because when I shot it when you shoot it sideways like that even though again some people might consider it to be a sitting duck it's much better for the meat than when that when they're flying and they're cupping like that and people shoot them usually in the air flying over they'll hit a lot of meat commonly they'll bruise it so it's not as good so this way I mean when I have a chance like I said earlier to have an ethical shot that I know it's safe and ethical I don't hesitate if I can get a good headshot in I mean it just makes sense you know we're meat hunters and the animal didn't suffer and uh, that's what it's all about so we'll uh, see you later for dinner so we got back home and as I promised I'm just going to show you to, uh, to basically breast the duck very easily without making a mess no mess no fuss here very easy and just by the way since I'm showing you the, the duck clean, easier than earlier a little bit better this is a female mallard so there's another duck that's very similar in coloration it's basically a black duck the difference here is that you wouldn't have two white lines here and the duck would be much darker but you know there's a lot of resemblance usually you have maybe a white line here but no white line on top if there's a white line it's much darker but anyways a little side note but mallards are great eating and uh can't wait to have it so uh, let me just show you here so what i do very simply so the breast is located right here and the, the key here is just to get underneath the feather usually just make a little incision just so I can get to the breast and then the skin is very easy to lift and to loosen so right now you can already see the meat see? very easy and after that you basically just use a little knife I mean it doesn't have to be a killer knife like this but that's what I'm using here Do one side at a time. So you might want to zoom in. I don't know if you can see, but I'm just pulling the skin. I mean, the skin comes right off the meat. And I'm trying not to make a mess with the feathers, so I'm just lifting the skin lightly. So now you can see I'm exposing the uh, the breast meat. So this is the center of the breastbone. So I'm just gonna go a little further and get a little bit more skin off. So yeah, it's really easy. I mean, really, it doesn't get easier than this. So you don't have to gut it, you know, I mean, nothing like that. And the feathers, that'd be a pain if you have to get all the feathers off. So what I'm doing here, it's just the easiest way that I know to get the meat off, all the meat. I mean, all the meat that's edible. So yeah, you can just pull, I mean, most of the time you don't even need, you can just pull and it comes right off. So here we go. I got all the breast exposed, so what I like to do is just to uh, toss this here. Just gonna cut the breast very easily. I just follow the breast bone all the way top to bottom and from the bottom here. And it's just going to slowly follow the bone. And it's just that easy. I mean, really, it's not something that takes a lot of practice to master. It's really, you know, it just comes right off. I follow the bone. I mean, it might seem intimidating, but it's really not. It shouldn't be. Then there's the, uh, the bone along the top by the neck, like the Y bone or whatever you want to call it. Wish bone, you know, the bone that people will used to uh he wishes when they break it so here's one side one breast we'll do the same on the other side have the breast 
I do the thighs too. I mean, the thighs have to come off too. Obviously, there's meat inside. You see, very nice and easy. Two brass thighs, more of the same, really. You just fold the skin. Best part is eating it. When Allison's gonna cook it, she's got a, she makes a nice stir fry, and really, I mean, it turns out great. And it's not strong tasting by any means. A lot of people would say, oh, it must be strong tasting duck, but nah, I mean, it's not fat, it's not, nothing close to what people would say. All right, so now, the way I do it, I just pop the hip right here, cut along the hip bone. And again, there's not a lot of meat in the hip, in the, in the thigh, but the way I look at things, there's meat, so I take it. And this time I just corn it into a corny solution that I have that I do for yeast. But we'll see. So anyways, so here's one thigh. And we're almost done. That quick. Crazy. You can see, but two nice, uh, two nice brass. And we're just gonna wash them and uh, get them for, uh, get them prepared for tonight. And what I'll do is just slice them in little strips for the stir fry. And uh, you know, first I gotta wash them, but that's it. So we'll see you later for the next part. Here we are. It's cooking time. So what we're doing here is just, it's all prep. I mean, the vegetables are prepped and all, but I'm just gonna cut the meat. And uh, as you can see again, nice meat, no bullet holes, not even one. So that's why I was stressing the importance of, you know, if you can do a head chop, makes sense because there's no damage to the meat, so that's great. So let's, uh, so what I'm doing here is just making a little strips for Allison for her stir fry. So just, again, against the grain, that's always the key here. So I'm just going across, just little strips, doesn't have to be thick. I mean, nice little pieces so she can stir fry it so it's good to go so even though it doesn't seem like a lot of meat it's plenty for two people it's just that protein some flavor I mean it'll be perfect so uh, now I'm gonna video Allison she'll be putting it all together and uh, can't wait till uh, I can smell it because that's some good smelling stuff right here so uh, let's do a switcheroo All right, welcome to our kitchen. Stefan finished prepping our duck. I prepped up the vegetables and I prepped up, this is um, just bouillon stock. For the bouillon stock, I use vegetable base, but you could use beef or chicken base, doesn't matter. But you want about two, or two to three cups of base. And for the oil, whenever I do a stir fry, we stir fry with real high heat. So actually let's turn on our heat. I use high heat oil. So two good high heat oils is coconut oil, which I really like to use for the meat. And then the vegetables, I just, I would need too much. So I use grapeseed oil, which is really good for sauteing and stir frying. Very good um, high heat oil. So we use that for the vegetable coconut oil for the meat. Cast iron is real important. I love cooking with cast iron. If you don't cook with cast iron, highly suggest it. So I'm gonna put some coconut oil. Let that heat up a little bit. Cast iron pan really sears meat nicely. And it cooks the vegetables really good too, browns them. Okay, so that's enough. And so we're going to start by stir frying the duck. So the pan should be really hot when you put the duck in because you want it to sear, you want it to sizzle. So one way that you can actually check and make sure if it's hot, you can grab some water on your hands 
throw it in, you want it to bubble. So it's starting to do that. So I'm gonna say it's ready, hot enough. I'm gonna throw it in. And you wanna hear that noise. That noise is good. And then I'm just gonna try to have it cook evenly by splitting it up a little bit. Can you see that? Pretty good? Yeah. Okay, so we'll let one side sear. I think a lot of people make the mistake of wanting to stir too quickly, but you really want the juices to um, stay inside, so you really want it seared nicely. So before you start just flipping it around, you want a nice um, brown, a nice brown color. Okay, so we'll just let that cook up a tiny bit. While that's doing that, I can just show you the other ingredients that we're going to use. We have some chili garlic sauce. You can get that from an Asian store, maybe even the regular supermarket these days. Or you can use crushed red pepper, or even maybe a little bit of both. And then just some black pepper, some salt, some sesame oil, and then to thicken the sauce, we're going to use uh, cornstarch with water. You'll see I'll mix it with water soon. And then this is a mixture of soy sauce and teriyaki sauce. And then Stefan actually peeled and prepped these peanuts, which we'll put on top. Okay, so now we have a nice brown color. I can start mixing it up. Now, if I were cooking venison or elk, um, or antelope, I would not want to cook it all the way because we like that more uh, medium rare. But this is duck. I cook duck a little bit more as I would turkey. But it's however you like your meat, obviously. Not overdone, actually. Okay, now it's going to cook a little more later with the sauce. So you actually don't need to cook it all the way through at first. So you see how that's getting a nice brown searing? That's, that's what you want to see. So I'm going to take this off. Then I'm going to set it aside while we cook our vegetables. So I'm going to start with the broccoli because it takes the longest and I did put it in the microwave for just about a minute and a half just to kind of start it a little bit. So it's not totally raw. It's still crunchy, but not totally raw. And broccoli is the main vegetable, so I use a lot of it. It's my favorite. And again, we're going to let that brown a bit. Try not to mix it too much right away. So just let it get some nice color. All right, so I cooked the broccoli for about three minutes. It's now uh, browned as much as it needs to be. So I'm just gonna transfer it to this big bowl. The reason why I don't cook all the vegetables together at once is because some of them take longer than others. So I find that if I cook them separately, then some don't get overdone while others are underdone. Kind of always done it that way. So Next I'm gonna do the onion. And with the onion, it takes about the same time I can do the zucchini. And this is some special zucchini. One of our patients actually grew it in her garden and brought it in for us. So that's Colorado-grown 
organic as it gets green zucchini. And you'll see that this meal is not low oil. I'm going to add a little bit more for the onion and zucchini. But you do need some fat in your diet. A little bit of fat never hurt anybody. Especially good fats like coconut oil and grapefruit oil. Avocado oil is another good oil that is great for stir fry because it's got a high heat um, before it smokes. So again, we're just gonna brown these. If we want, we can take a little bit of a break and we'll come back when they're done in about two, three minutes. All right, so a quick note, uh, the way that I pick these vegetables for the stir fry is basically what I have in my refrigerator. I don't always use the same vegetables. Whatever your favorites are, you could use two vegetables, three vegetables, five vegetables. The type and uh, number of vegetables don't really matter when you're doing a stir fry. So this is just um, the mix of the day. Okay, so these are pretty much, you don't have to, like, you don't have to overcook them either. You want the onions to still be a little bit crunchy. You don't want them to be overdone, the vegetables too. Personally, I don't like when people overcook their vegetables. If you like your softer, go ahead and cook them more, but I do a little bit on the crispier side. Again, they're gonna cook more in the end when we add the meat back in the sauce. So you don't wanna overcook them when you're sauteing them up. All right, so let's pick a couple more vegetables. We'll put this nice uh, orange pepper. Okay, and I'm gonna cook that a little bit before I add the asparagus, because like the broccoli, I started the asparagus a little bit in the microwave so that it's not cooking from raw and it doesn't take quite as long. Sometimes I do cook them from raw, but for this today uh, demonstrating, I didn't want them to take forever. Okay, so we're just gonna let those brown up a bit. And the other thing that I don't have that I wish I had was some sliced water chestnuts. I love to put water chestnuts in my stir fry, but I used my last one a few days ago and didn't get to the store. So we're just gonna let these brown a little bit and we'll be right back. All right, so the peppers are just about done. I'm adding quick the asparagus, which again, as I said, is um, pre-cooked just a little bit so I don't have to cook it too much. I just wanna get it just a little bit brown. So we're gonna leave those two. Oh, that looks good, nice and colorful. I do like to use a lot of different colors in my stir fry because one of the best parts about a stir fry is the presentation when you see all those different colors of the vegetables popping together. It looks just about as good as it tastes. Okay, so we're just gonna let those sit for maybe another minute and then we're gonna take them off. So now we're pretty much up to putting it all together. So first I'm gonna add the meat back in. And then I'm going to add all the vegetables back in. And hope that my block is big enough. Mix it up a little bit. All right, so the next step is to add your base, so whatever you used for your, your bouillon. 
you stop, you pour that in. Like I said, two to three cups. I did three cups. I wanted to make sure I had enough. That's all I'm going to use. So basically, you know, you want to see it. Can you see that right there? And then the next step is actually to bring that to a boil. You don't have to wait till it's boiling to add your soy sauce. And uh, this is soy teriyaki mix. You don't have to do a mix. You could just do soy sauce or just teriyaki. But I like mixing them together. Now, the amount that you do in there is to taste. I've made this a lot, so I kind of know about how much. But if you're not sure how much, because I don't measure anything, you can just kind of mix it around and taste it. You don't want it to be too salty or too strong. So just add that until it has a nice flavor. You can add a little bit at a time and taste your, your liquid as you go. Mm. I want my meat to cook a little more, so I'm trying to vary it a little bit. Okay, so we're just gonna let that come to a boil. It's gonna take maybe two minutes, and then we will uh, do the next step. All right, so it's almost boiling. It's just, um, just pre-boiling. I'm just gonna add some spices. I'm gonna add some pepper. That's black pepper. And then I'm gonna add a little bit of this um, chili garlic sauce. Now we like a little uh, spice to our food. Obviously, if you don't like spicy, skip that step. Just gonna mix that around. So spice is definitely to taste. You could add a little bit of crushed red pepper too. I'm going to taste this and see if it needs more spice. Maybe just a little. So Stepan pointed out that I'm tasting and I'm putting it back. I'm only serving the two of us and he doesn't mind if I put my saliva in our dinner a little bit. Obviously, if I had dinner guests, I would make sure that I used a clean spoon every time. And I wouldn't do that because that would be gross. So just a little bit of red pepper. And it is basically just about boiling, but I'm just going to give it maybe 30 seconds to a minute, and then we'll do the next step. All right, so it's boiling now, and the next step is very important. That's thickening the sauce. So this is cornstarch. It's three tablespoons, and it's just a little bit of water, about a quarter cup, maybe a quarter and an eighth. And you're gonna mix that cold water, cold water with the cornstarch, and then you just start pouring that in and mixing it just a little bit. When you put the cornstarch in, it's got to be boiling. This cornstarch is meant to thicken hot sauce, hot temperature. If it's not hot enough, it's not going to thicken. And I usually put it all around so it thickens evenly. A little here, a little there. And then it's got to cook just a little bit longer for the sauce to thicken up. Maybe you've used cornstarch before for thickening. So we're going to let that sauce thicken up a little bit. Mmm, it smells really, really good. I wish that the video could pick up 
the aroma that is coming out of this pot right now. Mm. Now we're gonna use rice for a base for our stir fry. We have some plates all set up. I cheated, Trader Joe's sells frozen rice and three minutes in the microwave. It's really easy and it tastes delicious. So the last step, once your sauce is nice and thick, really important for the flavor to add a little bit of sesame oil. At the end, I'm just gonna lower the heat. Sesame oil is always last. Put a little bit on for flavor. Mix it around. That's what gives it its authentic kind of Chinese flavor here. Mmm. Oh, this smells good. I'm really hungry. So it's duck Szechuan stir fry. Last step is going to be to add these peanuts. You don't have to use peanuts if you're allergic to peanuts or if you don't like peanuts, but it just adds a little bit of flavor and a little bit of crunch, and we really like peanut Szechuan stir fry. So, it's pretty much done. Just gonna serve it up and we're gonna give it a taste and let you know how it is. Be right back. Looks delicious. Here we are. The final step is to obviously enjoy the meal. And uh, it looks great, smells great. So I have a feeling it's gonna just taste amazing. So let me try it. And, uh, yeah, nice and crisp vegetables. Let me try the duck. Mm. He always thinks that the meat is the best part of the meal. Well. It all works together, but it's a <laughs> critical ingredient. I'm a little biased how they come thing, but very good. Yeah, duck, duck doesn't have really a very strong flavor. Just a mild, especially this kind of duck, especially mallard. So this is perfect. Nice flavor. All works great together and uh, from creek to table. Yeah, so that's the whole idea with this channel. We're trying to show you how you can go out, enjoy yourself. You have some nice meat, obviously organic doesn't get better than that and to be able to put it all together and enjoy, you know, at the end of the day is, uh, it's all special, obviously. It's, uh, it's kind of full circle. And, uh, that's and you get some exercise while you're at it too. Oh yeah, plenty. So, so. We, we keep fit by getting outside and hunting always entails a lot of walking. So enjoy. we keep fit and then we eat really good. Yeah. So it really is a lifestyle and that's what we're portraying here. So this is really the first meal for the channel we've cooked and that uh, the house and mainly cooked here. And uh, yeah, we'll do a lot more if you guys are interested because you know, there, there's a lot of recipes that you, you can introduce some wild game, wild elements to it and uh, it's always amazing. So until uh, next time, hope you guys get to try this someday. Definitely uh, delicious, I don't think is the word for it. Scrumptious. Okay, we're gonna go eat. That goes so good in a stir fry. I wish that you could taste it. The flavor of the duck is not strong. It just has a, a very mild, but just like phenomenal flavor in the stir fry. I really wish that you could taste this. It is so, so good. Wow. You've all done yourself once again. Mm -hmm. Pretty awesome. Amazing. Yeah. Mm. I'm loving every bite. 
And yeah. if Stefan is right, the meat does make the dish. <laughs>